It doesn't do any good to just feel differently. You have to behave differently. Accept the risk of vulnerability. Accept your partner. Be a good friend. Promote their self-esteem. Don't vent your frustrations at home. Make yourself happy, not right. These are action steps, things that you need to do differently. If you do things that makes your partner feel better about who they are, I promise you things are going to feel better at home. Well, we've been taking a journey talking about relationships. And if we look back over the journey, you remember I started out by talking about the relationship you have with yourself. You remember the reason I started there is because I said, you know yourself better than anyone else. Therefore, if you don't like you and you know yourself better than I do, then I'm inclined to take your word for it. I mean, you spend more time with you than I do. You know yourself more intimately than I do. And if you have decided with more data than I have that you're not a quality human being, who am I to second guess the person that has more information? Therefore, I want you to get along with you. I want you to be your best friend. I want you to accept yourself, flaws, fallacies, and all. Nobody's perfect. You're not going to be the perfect partner. And by the way, if you're looking for a partner, don't spend your life looking for the perfect partner. If you can make a list of all the things you want, all the things you need in a partner, and you can find a candidate that's 80%, you better bag them, tag them, and take them home. Because you're going to find that you can grow the other 10 or 20% in a lot less time than you would spend looking for someone that had that other 10 or 20%. You're never going to find 100%, but if you find someone that has the core characteristics that you believe are non-negotiable, other things you can learn to live with or you can grow. Now, I'm going to say this to you several times so you don't need to pull your car over and write this down. The quality of a relationship is a function of the extent to which it is based on a solid underlying friendship and meets the needs of the two people involved. Now, let me say that again. The quality of a relationship is a function of, meaning it depends on, a solid underlying friendship and to the extent it meets the needs of the two people involved. Two people involved. Not just you, the two people involved. So let's break that down. It's a function of a solid underlying friendship. Now, in episode seven, we talked about how you have to have a good friendship to have a good relationship. And I talked about the fact that you'll invest more with people that you just socially know than you will sometimes invest with people with whom you have an intimate relationship. Remember, I said you'll go to work and say, hey, how's it going? Did you see that game last night? Blah, 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 blah. But you'll pass your partner in the hall at home and just go, uh, hey. If that, there's something wrong with that. You want to invest the most where you have the most invested. You've already invested a lot in the people that you're living with, have children with, have years of shared history with. That's where you want to invest your energy, your effort. Now, let's talk about the solid underlying friendship. I don't know if you fell in love immediately with your significant other or if you had a friendship first and it grew into something romantic. It doesn't really matter. But ask yourself if you've stopped being good friends. Ask yourself if you have allowed your relationship to become problem-driven, where all you do is you solve problems. You solve kid problems, money problems, in-law problems, activities of daily living problems, house problems, whatever. And if that's true, if that is your relationship or it defines too much of your relationship, then let's make a plan to start being friends again. You know, there's a statistic, a sad and tragic statistic, that partners who go through major trauma, one of them has a serious illness, or a child is lost to an illness or an accident, some tragedy like that, they typically have a very difficult time adjusting, and they have an uncommonly high divorce rate. Now, why do they have an uncommonly high divorce rate? Because They went through this problem together, and now they are a trigger for each other. 
every time you look at your wife, you think about those hours at the hospital, walking in the waiting room, sitting in there, holding hands, and you think, well, that would bond you together. It may have at the time, but now you associate that person with all of that pain, all of that agony, all of that misery. Now, can you work through that? Of course you can, but most people don't. We associate people with everything that's in their aura, everything that surrounds them. So ask yourself, what is your partner most likely to associate you with? And the answer is, what are the most common topics and issues that the two of you talk about? Do the two of you talk about funny movies? Do the two of you talk about planning interesting adventures? Do you talk about accomplishments and achievements that you've each been able to create in your lives? Or do you talk about there's not enough money, your kid's on drugs, your mother keeps interfering? If it's problem, 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 then they're going to associate you with a problem. I'm going to ask you a few questions and see if you can answer yes. If you can't, you're not ready to start being a good friend. I realize that it's not too late. Can you say that, honestly, that you realize it's not too late? It is reasonable for me to want a rewarding and fulfilling relationship. Can you say that in earnest, that it's reasonable to want that? I am entitled to and deserve a high-quality, caring relationship. Because if you don't think you deserve it, you'll never get it. I have identified the wrong thinking that has previously contaminated my relationship. We've been through the myths. We've been through the bad spirit. We've been through the point that you are not a victim, that you own your relationship. So if you've identified the wrong thinking that's previously contaminated your relationship, then you're ready to move on. I have identified the bad spirits that contaminate my relationship. Have you done that work? Have you written down the bad spirits, the ones I listed that you're guilty of doing? I have embraced the personal relationship values that will configure me for success. We've talked about those things. I have diagnosed and gotten real about the pain and problems in my relationship so that you can talk about the issues and not just the topics. And if that's true, then you're ready to move forward. I accept and acknowledge full ownership of my contribution to where this relationship is. You own it. You recognize I either elicit, maintain, or allow whatever this relationship is. And lastly, I am committed to tapping into my core of consciousness. I am actively going to choose what kind of partner I am. The worst thing in the world you can do is get your partner to open up to you and make disclosures about their intimate needs for you to then say, well, that's just silly. Don't judge your partner's needs, your partner's disclosures. Work to discover them. Look at their history. You make some inferences. Validate those inferences with them. But... When they do disclose that, it's really important that you handle that with sensitivity as though it were a fragile egg. There are certain things that your partner may tell you they need, that they may need from you, that you may think they're just wrong, that they already have that. They don't need that. They're just wrong. That's not how you feel. That's not what you do. Da, 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 da. No, that's not the time to place to do that. You got to decide, you want to be right or you want to be happy. When they disclose something to you, you need to be a real good steward of that information. And let me tell you the biggest mistake you can ever make in your relationship. If your partner discloses something to you in this process I'm talking about with regard to discovering needs, and them sharing with you, telling you what they need, what's important to them based on their vulnerabilities or maybe based on wounds that they've carried throughout their life. If you ever, ever 
violate that by bringing it up in a argument later and throwing it up in their face like they've entrusted to you that they feel particularly hypersensitive because they were molested as a child and later you say well i guess that's just because you were molested stop your sentence go pack your bags Load your car and move your happy ass down the road because there ain't no coming back from that. When someone takes the risk of entrusting you with their truth, vulnerabilities, needs, pain, and you then use that to leverage them later in an argument, that is a violation of the worst order And I can tell you, I've seen it happen, and there was no coming back from it. It is a violation of trust. It's like, I want to know your needs because I want to meet them. And they tell you that, and then you use it against them. That is psychopathic exploitation. And they will dump you and should. You must be good stewards of that information, and don't you Ever. I don't care how upset you are. I don't care if it's in divorce papers five years later. I don't care how, why it comes up. That is never okay. Never, ever, never okay. So I'm going to have a family history section in there so you can say, wow, now that I write that down, that kind of tells me a little bit about why he or she does the things that he or she does. I think. By going through some of these things, some of these surveys and quizzes, it's going to really trigger you up to tune in to your needs as well as your partner's needs. I think it's going to make a big, big difference in helping you get started in identifying your list. So once again, the quality of a relationship is a function of the extent to which it's based on a solid underlying friendship and meets the needs of the two people involved. So that means you need to work on your friendship. If you want a good friend, be a good friend. And then you have two jobs. One is to teach your partner your needs, which you can't do if you don't know them. So I'm putting things on the website to help you. And then job number two is discover the needs of your partner. So I'm putting some things on the website that will help you, trigger you, to tune in to some of your partner's needs and what they might be. And then the question is, are you committed enough to work to meet those needs? We're in episode eight, the final episode. If you've come this far, I'm betting you're committed enough to try and make those needs a priority and meet those needs for your partner. I hope you realize how much power you have in this relationship. And you know what? If you do the things that we're talking about, and your partner doesn't respond, you have the peace of mind of knowing you've done above and beyond. You've stopped being a victim and started being an action-oriented change agent in your relationship. That should give you a tremendous amount of peace. But I'm telling you, when you do these things, you're going to see changes on the other end because I am a strong believer that you get what you give. So this has been Relationship Reality Check. The question was, how much fun are you to live with? I'm betting, after you spending this time, that you're going to be a whole lot more fun to live with. And every one of these I've done has been a great reminder to me to be a better partner. Been a great reminder to me to keep those relationship skills honed and focus on the things that brought me together with my wife 48 years ago. So I've been learning every step of the way, as I hope you guys have been. And I hope this series has been of value, and I hope you'll recommend it to a lot of other people to listen to as well. And this is something you can come back to and listen to parts and pieces of it as you need. Relationships are managed. They're not cured. 
and management is active and ongoing. So hang in there. And remember, you create the results in life that you believe you deserve. So claim your right to have a first-class relationship and don't settle for anything less. I'm Dr. Phil. I'll see you around.